Pop it. I'm going to pop it into speaker view here, everybody. Um, hello, hello, hello. Hello, everybody. Um, and welcome to the first ever uh, digital non-binary acting methods workshop. My name is Joe Michael Rezus, pronouns they, them, theirs. 
um, and I will be facilitating this evening. I am a PhD candidate in theater and performance studies at Tufts University and a working actor and acting instructor with experience teaching students from elementary school through adulthood. The workshop today is sponsored in part by a grant from the City of Boston Mayor's Office of Arts and Culture Opportunity Fund with sponsorship and hopeful future collaboration with the Education Department at Company One Theater. Today, based on a book project I have in progress, we will be exploring gender in actor training and character development. Through a few exercises, we will cultivate queer energies, discuss returning agency to the actor's body in rehearsal and performance spaces, and explore how sensation, memory, and failure can offer new vocabularies in the actor's craft with special attention to queer and trans artists in the space today. Um, for those of you tuning in from home, welcome. Uh, today, this stream is being live captioned and we encourage you to participate in today's activities and conversations from the comfort of your own space um, into whatever capacity you feel uh, best and most supported. So I'm just going to um, ooh, screen, sh screen share one more time. Do, do, do. Oh, dear. So, even after so many years, everybody, am I, I feel like Zoom still is Zoom. Um, here we go. Going to screen share this here. Um, some organizations um, take a look at here. While this workshop um, is not held in physical space, I would like to acknowledge that this evening of work um, is being conceptualized, created, and now viewed on the ancestral lands seized from indigenous peoples across the world. I hope we recognize the necessity of honoring and understanding the histories of the indigenous land we occupy. Through this acknowledgement, I hope to pay respect to those communities, families, and their elders, regardless of time. I recognize that this acknowledgement alone is fully in insufficient and in no way can undo the legacies of violence and displacement of indigenous people. Through this ongoing practice in our ever more digitized world, I ask you at home and in the workshop today as well to also uncover truths on the path towards decolonization and reconciliation. While we stream through the airways, the land is still occupied. This evening in particular, we honor our queer, trans, and two-spirit Indigenous siblings, holding space for the complex intersections that Indigenous people face as gender non-conforming individuals enduring the violences of settler colonialism. Tonight, in active practice of reparation, I ask everyone to join me in donating to the Native Justice Coalition's Two-Spirit program listed here, which engages in decolonizing gender roles and identities within Native and First, First Nation communities. And more information can be found at www.nativejustice.org slash two-spirit. Moreover, um, as this is a workshop sponsored in part by the Boston Mayor's Office of Arts and Culture, I ask that anyone with the means to do so uh, match my $25 donation in support of a local organization here in Boston, the Theater Offensive True Colors Out Youth Theater Program, an out-of-school community-based theater program to train queer youth leaders with special attention to two-spirit, queer, trans, Black, Indigenous, and other artists of color. Thank you so much. And I know with the screen share that things get a little bit weird with other things blocking it and I have my notes in front of it. So here's this. If you haven't gotten a chance to look at it, here are the links. We're going to wait a little bit so you can take that in, take a photo, take a screenshot if you're watching this um, after the workshop later. And here we go. All right, stopping the share. Okay. So can I ask all of the participants who feel comfortable to turn their cameras on, um, to turn your cameras on? Hello. Hello, everybody. Um, I am also joined today, um, not just with you all here in the workshop, um, but by uh, my lovely assistant facilitator, uh, Tatiana Emery, um, who is a theater maker graduating from Tufts University in spring 2022 with a major in theater and performance studies and education, um, passionate about education and its intersections with the arts. Tatiana looks forward to continuing a journey as a working artist and teacher. Tatiana, can you introduce yourself today? Yes, absolutely. Hello, everybody. I'm so happy to be joining you. My name is Tatiana. I use she, they pronouns, and I am really excited to be a part of this workshop and to help bring Joe's wonderful 
theory to this Zoom space today. So we're going to go around and introduce ourselves, name pronouns if you would like them used in the space, if you feel comfortable sharing them, and answering our introduction question, however you see fit. Our question for today is, how did you arrive at this workshop? What was your journey here? This can be a how or a why or a what. Answer however you see fit. So we'll go around, we'll say names, pronouns if you're comfortable and like to share and answering the question how you got here today. So I will start by answering the question and then I'll popcorn to someone and we can just pass it around. Sound good? Awesome. All right, Tatiana, she they pronouns. And I got here today by climbing a rickety set of stairs. And I would love to pass the mic to Josiah. Hi everyone, um, I'm Josiah. My pronouns are he and they, and I got here today by taking many different subway trains. I'm um, so glad that I can be here. Literally ran into my apartment like two minutes ago. Um, I'll pass it off to TJ. Hi, my name is TJ. I use they them pronouns and I got here today um, finishing my nap at 445 and walking into this room and sitting on this chair. Um, and I will pass it to Kit. Hello, everybody. My name is Kit M. Ray. My pronouns are they and or she. And I was invited to this to attend this workshop by Joe. And I was curious in exploring acting and seeing other queer non-binary faces. And I'm so excited to be here and share with you all. And I'll pass it on to V. Hi, I'm V. My pronouns are they, them. Uh, and I got here uh, by just like putting a blanket on the ground so I could kneel on it. Uh, I'm going to pass it to Connor. Hi, my name is Connor. Uh, I use he and they pronouns. Uh, I got here through uh, a long week of work that I am very glad is behind me. Uh, and I'm very happy to be here. Um, I'm going to pass it on to Abby and Margaret. Hi. Do you want to go first? Yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Margaret. I use she. I got here because I'm such a huge fan of Joe and Tatiana. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Abby. I use she, her pronouns. Um, I am also a huge fan of Joe and Tatiana. Hi, I'm Caitlin. I use she, her pronouns, and I have the same reason as the two before me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and we will pass it to who hasn't got. Yeah, go ahead. Hi, everybody. My name is Nope Anna, and um, I go by they and them. And I'm here because my dream um, project is to see like queer woman in like a old martial arts type of um, project. And yeah. Amazing. Thank you so much. Is there anyone who hasn't had a chance to introduce themselves? Cool. Awesome. We are so happy to have you in the space today. We're so excited. So we have a larger group. So we will move through the workshop with volunteers as needed. But just keep in mind, since we have a couple of folks here today, be mindful of the space you're taking up and stepping up and, and stepping back as needed. And we want to encourage everyone in this process to ask questions and ask for clarifications as they come up. So if you have a question about the theory, about the process, about the activity, if you want something repeated or just have any general questions for Joe and myself, please feel free to private message them to me in the Zoom chat. So I will pop up underneath Tatiana and you can select uh, who you will be sending it to. Just be mindful that you're not dropping it in the group chat as it were, but um, if that happens, it's totally fine. I will just be keeping track of all of our questions for us for this session. And for those of you watching the live stream, if you want to drop any questions in the comment section, we will be happy to answer them after our stream ends. 
Amazing. Thank you, Tatiana. Thank you all for being here. I know that like 5 p.m. on a Friday on the East Coast is like not the most accessible time for literally any of us. And I, I, I'm barely able to be here right now too. Um, uh, schedules. Um, so I'm just so grateful to all of you for being here today. And for those of you watching either after this has, you know, happened live or um, happening live right now, just thank you so much. It means, it means the world. Um, just wanted to talk a little bit more about the project and the project outline and where this was born out of and why it's happening a little bit. Um, so uh, beginning in around 2018, I began thinking with trans artists in greater Boston via Stage Sources Gender Explosion Initiative. Um, gender equity was being fought for, um, developed, um, and really, really um, investigated by, by gender explosion when I first arrived in Boston in 2018, um, specifically for safer rehearsal spaces and accommodations with special focus on terminology, gender neutral bathrooms and representation rehearsal rooms. Um, I also began noticing in my classrooms though, from universities to the public school systems uh, within New England, that non-binary and trans students were not seeing themselves necessarily reflected in the histories of actor training within the Stanislavski system and its derivatives. Um, and this continued um, when I worked with a lovely team of teaching artists with the Yale Dramatic Association for students at um, New Haven High School um, as well. Just students not seeing themselves reflected in that lineage of, of work whatsoever. So the scope of this project um, is really to address the Western colonial binary conceptions of gender I feel are deeply embedded into the character development, gender bending and play I see in acting classrooms. Um, I find that ideas of presence and power in rehearsal spaces lean towards the masculine, which creates sometimes violent and oftentimes hostile environments for actors looking to play with gender or embody queer and trans characters within theater as an institution. I'm curious though, um, because I have you all here today as well, um, what your experiences are with how you have navigated being either queer, transgender, not conforming, um, in rehearsal or performances? Um, and more specifically, have you ever felt that your training or learning as an actor has been able to account for gender expansion at all? Open, open, open question to the group. I know that's a big question, um, but these are these are big topics, but anything come to mind. It could be an instance, one little moment. Um, it could be a good thing as well. It could be a joyful moment um, of being uh, affirmed in a rehearsal space, but really anything. How have you felt about gender in performance? I think gender performance has been like something that I've always like wanted to explore, but growing up socialized as a masculine person, um, like through having a trans feminine experience and not being equipped to like embody that as a child is like being able to start to look for spaces or carve out spaces that can affirm me and can see, you know, more Black trans folks and Black trans women out on, you know, sh different like shows. And I think that visibility in increasing that's really important. So it's a part of the reason why, I, you know, also came here to explore and expand and radically envision different avenues um, for myself and other people. So great question. I love this. Yeah, Josiah, go for it. Oh, I actually did have something to say, but I was applauding. Um, oh, oh. <laughs> uh, and playing off of that, I, I think I, I really valued what you said around creating your own space. Um, I think that's really such a big thing because I think when I first heard the question, all I could think of was all the violent spaces that I've been in, especially in higher education. I mean, I know a lot of us have went through are in Tufts University. So I had my own experiences there. But these ideas of not necessarily feeling like you, there is a space to be non-binary, that there is a space to be trans, that there is a space to explore experiences beyond the limited experiences of the writers, of the theatrical makers, of whoever, whoever, especially in historical pieces. Um, and especially as someone who studied musical theater. So I think that's really kind of where I've always been is how can I, how carve out that space? How can I make that space for myself? Um, and a lot of times it's, it, it comes to stepping back and realizing that 
sometimes that the the work or the emotional labor into it isn't worth trying mm. to create this rehearsal room, trying to teach professors or masters in their field. Um, so that's that's kind of what first comes to mind when I hear that question, Joe. Okay, great, great. Okay, I'm gonna I'm I'm holding on to that, holding on to that. Okay. Um, uh, anybody else? I want I want to try to synthesize this into yes, 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 yes. Anybody else? Please, please share thoughts. Um, I I'm I'm gonna write mine in the chat uh, just mm -hmm. for time, but uh, yeah, but but I I have a lot of thoughts about this because I come from a devising background where we use the body and uh, as like the first impulse and I'm just going to say it now, never mind. Uh, I'll, I'll be quick though. Uh, uh, like we start with the body and like, you would think that that's such a, um, a, uh, uh, a freeing space. Cause it's like, this is my body, but, but then you think about how people see your body and then it's like, and then, and then they, they say, well, is this character that you're portraying a man or a woman? And it's like, I don't, I don't have the, I'm not equipped right now. I'm trying to just play a tomato. Like that's, that's what's in my head. I'm just trying to play a tomato. So, so like, you know, the idea of like, what's going on here, what's happening here. And then how is that being read by the audience? I mean, there's like already kind of, there's like a dynamic that like you, you can't always escape. And it's, uh, it's really frustrating because even when you're doing something that you feel like is fully embodied to you, sometimes people, they just don't, they don't see it. Okay. All right. Thank you all so much. Um, okay. Whew. Sometimes I, I, I was talking to Tatiana about this in an in-person workshop. Sometimes the ideas just feel like they're, they're sitting in the head and being in community like this is just, wow. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Um, thinking about carving out spaces, thinking about, um, imagining elsewheres and, and, and thinking about representation and also thinking about um, questions of embodiment and, val and validating embodiment within a space. I'm, I'm hearing I'm hearing all of this. Um, I just want to move quickly, very, very quickly um, into this manifesto that kind of started this whole project off. Tatiana and I are going to read back and forth this little manifesto. Um, and then we're going to move into some graphics that hopefully will become starting points within this project. Um, they are by no means set in stone and they are not done um, by any means, but definitely something that I think will be the basis of a lot of the exercises that I've been developing for this, for this book project um, about returning that agency in a space to the actor, the individual. Um, and I, I think you'll see why, but I'll get to reading and, and I'll just stop talking in a tangent. Great. Um, I believe that the individual on stage has the capacity through imagination, collective creation, memory, sensation, to embody not just character with intention and motivation on stage, readable to fellow cast members and the audience, but within genealogies and histories of queer kinship. The body is a vehicle to locate the self within the context of these histories, in the context of the stage world, and to experiment with how the body is perceived, questioned, and liberated from the confines of spectatorship. In this way, non-binary acting methods prioritizes failures of legibility on stage and off, working through the joy and messiness of the aesthetic in all character creation practices. This is a devising of the self. In collaboration with a playwright's script, design, the work of a director, and an ensemble of actors, fractals, or the name of the uh, exercises embedded into this text, fractals are deployed in and out of rehearsal to craft character from the ground up, linking the self to the past, the past to the present, and the aesthetic with the future. These acting methods are less about queer and trans actors learning ways to embody gender realness for audiences on stage. This work is not a practice in passing, nor is it a practice in transcending the need for gender. We dedicate ourselves instead to the ideas that gender is a full, joyful, is full, joyful, mutable, and on a spectrum, as liquid as ink in a bottle, as dry as ink on a page. 
Gender was historically and is presently policed, colonized, and manipulated by the violences of white supremacy. Gender expansion has been performed and lived by generations to undo, refuse, and refute the colonizing, anti-queer, anti-Black, and anti-Indigenous forces of white supremacy. We honor those whose gender performance is a testament of strength. We honor those whose gender performance is a letter of love. We honor those whose gender performance is always in flux. We honor those whose gender performance is met with violence. We honor those whom we have lost to such violence. We remember them as we play. We play. Playing with gender is not new. Playing with gender is drag. Playing with gender isn't always drag. Playing with gender is joyful. Playing with gender is painful. Playing with gender has a legacy, has ancestry, has ancestors, has elders, has futures. Playing with gender is our right and our privilege. It is not just a game, and it is only a game. Let's play. So that was a thought bubble that kind of burst one day, and I wrote it all down, and then I started making up a bunch of exercises and synthesizing things that had happened in classrooms. Um, uh, with students of mine and just trying to make things feel more right um, in, in the classroom, especially. So talking a little bit, um, well, let's stop talking. Let's get into one of the methods. Um, so this is chaos calm. Um, this is one of the methods um, that is deeply indebted um, to a lot of uh, theater practitioners and, and um, acting instructors of the past. Um, if you're familiar with Anne Bogart's viewpoints, um, similar to soft focus, um, but we're thinking expansively with the body through uh, this, this method of chaos calm. So you can have your sound on or off, you can be muted or, or not um, for this, um, but just know you're going to be imagining your body um, undulating in some ways, um, however you, you feel best. Uh, you can stand for this, you can sit for this, um, but this is chaos calm. Um, we're gonna be thinking about the queer potential of energy in our bodies right now. Um, I am not necessarily saying that the metaphysical aspects of this, uh, I fully necessarily believe in in this moment or tomorrow or yesterday, um, but right now I want you to give in to this as much as you uh, feel safe and comfortable to do so. Um, our bodies, ourselves, have energy potential. Close your eyes for me, please, if you can. Take a deep breath in and out. And another deep breath in and out. And for those of you watching at home, you can do this as well. Now, I want you to imagine the energy housed within your cells. Your cells are doing so much for you at every single moment of the day. Loving you, keeping you moving. Take a deep breath in and out. Those cells are also made up of other particles that move in and out of those cell walls, in and out of your body with all of the other elements around you. Take a deep breath in and out. I want you to imagine the energy in every atom in your cells, in your body. And now I just want you to imagine them vibrating with potential energy. And that vibration begins to move the atoms around and move the cells in your body, beginning to move the tissue in your body, the bones and the muscles, and you can feel yourself vibrate. The energy stored in those atoms are making you move. You are making you move. Allow that energy to vibrate your body in whatever shape you can imagine with your eyes closed. You can expand and contract to whatever shape you can imagine that energy taking form as. Allow that vibration to shift faster and slower. Take a deep breath in 
and out. And now take the energy of that vibration and release it on a hum. Mm. And I want this hum to be the most comfortable hum for your voice, for your throat. You're not performing for anybody else right now. You're not performing for me or the group. This is just the sound, the pitch, the tone that feels most comfortable in your body in this moment. Let it feel warm. Allow that energy to fill up your body on a hum. And let it get louder and louder with the vibration in your body. Allow your, your body to move with that energy and the hum as it gets louder. And then let the energy slowly release. Let the hum get quieter and quieter and the vibration gets slower and slower until silence is nearly there and the movement is almost gone and you come to stillness. Take a deep breath and out. And in this moment, you might feel lack, but there's a lot of potential in this loose space after all of that momentum and energy. And open your eyes. Hello, hi. Um, so that's Chaos Calm. Um, and well, I just wanna hear from you. How did that feel? Does that feel like anything at all? I've done this a couple of times already in person. It's, it's, it's a different experience with a group. Uh, doing it alone is a little bit different across Zoom, but how did that feel? How does your body resonated? I really liked it. Great. That's good. Anything else? I liked, um, I guess, imagining all the cells in my body with the energy. Good, good, good. Great. Lovely. Having done it both in a group setting and this time on my own, I found that there was a really nice connection between body and voice, especially in thinking about pitch and aligning what was comfortable for my body, for my throat, and letting that come out in the sound. It was a very centering experience. I think Connor popped that in the chat as well. Thank you, Connor. Yeah, lovely. Um, so Chaos Calm came out of this idea that uh, I think ideas of being centered or calm in a space and ready to work or ready to labor theatrically, uh, um, those ideas, I wanted to, to throw that, not necessarily throw it completely away, um, but allow a centering exercise to be one that is based in an, uh, an idea that energy of momentum doesn't necessarily have to sit in the binary either. That being full up of energy and being in a lack space of energy is just a, a spectrum as well, right? So this queer energy source is something that comes from our own body and we can um, use it as we see fit um, on any given day. Um, and you'll see across the board as we go into some of these other activities um, that really the, the idea behind fractals is this queer energy source and returning the agency to the actor's body to create the parameters within which to work um, within which to create art um, so whatever you are feeling in any given day um, you can bring yourself your whole self or parts of yourself to whatever you are creating and that is enough um, and that is what you are bringing to the space that day um, so chaos calm is just one way in to start rehearsal and rehearsal break up a rehearsal um, but just a, a little centering exercise so here we go fractals what are fractals um we're gonna share a screen again this is joe trying so hard um to make things make sense. Ah, okay. Um, so hi, um, fractals. Fractals. According to the Fractal Foundation, which I found out was real, um, a fractal is a never ending pattern. Fractals are infinitely complex patterns that are self similar across different scales. They are developed and created by repeating a simple process 
over and over and over in an ongoing feedback loop. Driven by recursion, fractals are images of dynamic systems, the pictures of chaos. Geometrically, they exist in between our familiar dimensions. Fractal patterns are extremely familiar since nature is full of fractals. For instance, trees, rivers, coastlines, mountains, bodies, clouds, seashells, hurricanes, etc. Um, just so everyone knows, oh, there's a weird ah, window fractal happening. Ah, uh, anyway, um, just so everyone knows, um, I, I don't know anything about math. Um, so just, I don't know anything about geometry. The name fractals just came out of me thinking, um, through my synesthetic brain of conceptualizing a lot of concepts as physical objects in space. And unfortunately, gender to me is glass. Um, so this is where it, this is what happens. Um, so here we are. Um, this is a graph. Um, in this graph here uh, is the idea of the fractalization model of thinking about gender performance in the craft of acting. This is my understanding of how the exercises in this book are going to scaffold onto themselves. This is not by any means a perfect understanding of gender performance in daily life whatsoever. This is my understanding and model of gender performance in the rehearsal room and on stage that I think is beneficial um, in helping specifically queer, trans and non-binary uh, actors thrive um, in that environment. So if we look at this little graph um, over here, um, the first out of character um, would be an understanding that an actor has a certain light cast upon them over there on the left. Um, that is the idea of being out of character, that light passes over the actor's body, it's an imaginary light, um, and sends the image of that actor, that light reflected off of the actor's body, um, out, outward, outward, over here, um, somewhere, out into a, an audience beyond, beyond the body itself. Um, so that would be out of character. In a traditional model, as I understand um, a lot of presence-based Stanislavski derivative acting methodologies, um, the actor is still over here having light cast on their body ref reflected off of their body. Um, and as I have studied a lot of um, you know, acting texts as I have taught them, um, I have come to understand this prism, this pyramid, to be the character that blocks the audience that is over here from the, from the actor. So the character blocks the actor. A shadow is cast um, onto the audience um, that indicates the character's gender uh, to, to the audience. Um, that being said, it is still a shadow, right? Um, this is a solid triangle, right? Um, a solid pyramid is, is blocking the actor, um, but there's still a shadow, which means light is still passing into the audience, indicating that that actor is still there. Um, so that's where I think we get into a murkiness of thinking about gender bending and drag and historically thinking about binaries with how bodies are perceived by audiences um, as this shadow is cast onto the audience and understanding how, how bodies function. Um, down here, things get a little bit more complicated um, with the fractalization model uh, that I base this, this book project around, um, which the actor is still over here on the left, but we have a series of prisms um, rather than a pyramid of character um, that refracts and fractalizes. I know that refracting and fractals are not the same. I, I it, it's, We have to go with it. It's suspension of disbelief, everybody. Um, but the idea that these pyramids have this fractal pattern, as we see here, repeated triangles. Um, the character is still here um, in the center, um, but light is able to pass through. The light of the of the um, actor's gender um, is able to pass through pretty fluidly and scatter across all of these different um, audiences uh, that uh, could, could perceive gender in, in some way. Um, so the self, the cast and collaborators, prior to the character. So that would be the gender of the actor is being perceived by the actor. So Joe, the actor, perceives Joe, the actor. Um, and the cast and collaborators also perceive Joe, the actor. 
Um, once Joe gets into character, the cast and fellow characters perceive Joe's character's gender. Um, and I myself am also Joe, perceiving Joe playing a character, that character's gender. We'll get into how that functions in just a second. So here we go. Maybe hopefully easier here. Ah, great. Gender rehearsativity as an idea. Um, so we have the actor and we have the character over here. Um, the line between the self um, and the character, um, the actor and the character starts to blur a little bit when we start thinking about gender in this way, at least I hope. Um, but what I hope um, this mode of thinking in rehearsal ooh, does um, is allow us to really think about how gender is being performed in a rehearsal space and in a performance space without always having to rely on how the audience and spectators are going to perceive a certain performance, right? We can start thinking about gender in a way that really, really, really prioritize, prioritizes how the actor um, hopes to embody character um, in rehearsal and, and beyond. Um, so I know this, I know the graphics. It's a lot, it's a lot, it's a lot, I, I understand. Um, but here, as we see here, the actor performs a certain gender to the cast and collaborators. The actor performs a certain gender to the audience and society and culture, and the actor performs a gender to the self. Over here, the character perform the 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 character performs a certain gender to the audience. The character performs to the cast and fellow characters, and the character performs to the actor. Um, I'm going to stop the share just for a second. Um, the reason why these six gender performances, while complicated, um, uh, I think it, for especially I think some of my uh, undergraduate students, even just this semester that I brought this up to uh, on a whim, just on a random Thursday. Um, and we were just like writing things on the board and I was like, have you ever thought about this? Um, I think with the book project and um, modeling these structures in rehearsal, we'll, we'll get to a place where um, we can start having conversations about what students and what actors would like to prioritize in any given rehearsal when developing a character. So that means with six potential ways of thinking about the self and the character, um, if on a, any given day, um, a student has, uh, I don't know, if there's a, a, a student, me, let's take me, Joe, hi, I'm Joe, and I am the actor coming into a rehearsal space, and I'm having uh, a trauma response uh, to playing um, men. Um, I don't want to be a man. Right, my character is a man and I'm not feeling comfortable playing a man that day in a space, right? I can come in and work on the three gender performances that are centered around me and not the gender performances of the character that I am portraying that day. Um, so activities in the space can focus on me and not the character. Um, so again, always meeting the actor and the student where they are at um, on any given day. Um, another way that uh, I think uh, we discovered in person was a, a great way, Tatiana, of describing this as well, was I had a student once um, embodying a very high femme character. And this was a cis woman playing a very, very high, high, high femme wearing pink all the time. And I think a great example of this would be like Elle Woods, um, playing Elle Woods um, in a rehearsal space, if you want to go with a traditional understanding of, of Elle Woods, right? Um, and if that actor came into the space in my classroom and said, I don't know how to play Elle Woods because that femininity isn't the type of womanhood that I understand. That's not the type of gender performance that I understand in my daily life. Um, this, this model doesn't necessarily only um, apply to trans and non-binary students and actors as well. It applies across the board. It, it frees us from having to think about gender um, as something that only pertains to some people, but is actually something that pertains to all. Trans studies is for everybody, you know? Um, so that's the model, right? So six, six, six gender performances every time you walk on stage are happening, everybody, unfortunately or fortunately, I haven't quite decided. Um, and I think in the, in the coming months, as I keep developing these exercises, um, I do know though that um, 
being able to have the agency over what you want to work on on any given day is has been wonderful for me as an actor and seeing my students do it as well has just been so joyful. Has has this made some some sense? At least I, it's again circulating in the head and Tatiana and I was like, here's a graphic and we looked at them and then printed them and then they were out in the world and now it's here. Um, so great. Um, for those of you watching from home, if you need to go back and screenshot those, do so. Um, they're not copywritten yet, so don't distribute them. I don't know. I don't know anything about copyright. Anyway, um, great. Here we go. Let's move into an exercise now, because that's 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 the way we go um, with this. So one activity um, that comes out of the book is something called self-similarities. So fractals as, as a repeating shape um, are self-similar. So they replicate and then turn outward, right, in different shapes and different patterns, but they're self-similar um, in that type of mirroring and repetition. So uh, self-similarities um, as exercises are something that I, I want us to focus on um, in rehearsal rooms as well. Just like that energy with chaos calm being stored within the body, we can also focus on ourselves, especially queer and trans folks, um, that we might not have source material. We might have to carve out spaces for ourselves, but we can still do deep source work for ourselves when developing character by doing self-similar work um, with sensation and memory. So this is a childhood memory exercise that we're going to do everybody um, with emphasis on joy. There are two childhood memory exercises, one on failure and one on joy. I feel like on a Friday, we should do the one on joy. Um, so I want you all to think back to a childhood memory based on an object um, that brings forth joy in your body. Examples, uh, flying a kite for the first time, eating an ice cream cone on a summer day, uh, Tatiana brought into the space uh, in person recently, hula hooping successfully. It was a wonderful gesture. Locate the story of this memory in your body and distill the story into three repeatable gestures and one line of dialogue. Um, does that make sense to everybody? Does everybody have that? Um, so we need three gestures that can be repeated. So, and by that, I always tell students all of the time, you can't flop like a fish onto the ground because you, you can't do that more than a couple of times without really hurting yourself, right? So just do repeatable gestures, smaller the better, especially within the Zoom boxes, I think. But three repeatable gestures and one line of dialogue. So take like a minute or two, explore them, play with them. Um, and yeah, we'll come back in about a minute. Great. Play, play. You can turn your camera off, keep it on and be ready. Do do. Great. And for those of you at home watching, um, thank you. Um, and also as everyone is uh, preparing their gestures, um, you can also do this at home. I know I won't be able to see your gestures. Um, I feel very blues clues right now <laughs> because I can't hear your response. Um, but uh, if anyone at home wants to comment uh, what gestures they were working with, I would be happy to uh, take a look at those afterward or Tatiana, one of us would definitely do that um, after the workshop today. Great. Lovely. Um, Tatiana, because you have done this before and before everybody else is um, hopping back, do you have one today that you would like to share? Yes, I do. I have a, I was an only child when I was younger. <laughs> Bear with me. I had a single trampoline, a trampoline for one. So Great. that is the, the object I'm thinking about today and I'm happy Great. to Great. Do you want to, can you demonstrate just quickly? I'll pin you and then we'll, and we'll see how that goes. All right. I'll put it on speaker. Incredible. Right. I just want to, I'll make some, some bigger gestures. I have no room to flip. Amazing. Great. That's amazing. Um, can everyone come back as you as you have your gestures? Um, lovely. Also, round of applause for Tatiana for going. Um, Zoom, Zoom, 
Zoom is still awkward, everybody, and that is okay because it is an accessible form of community and that is why we love it. Um, so if anybody else wants to share their gesture, um, we're gonna get into why um, embodying this is, is uh, what the potential of it is, but who wants to go? I'm, I'm eyeing the group of three um, <laughs> because I think that would be fun, um, but also anybody else, anybody else, feel free to jump in. Um, my object is like a place of joy for me as a child was the beach. Um, and my mom used to make like drip sand castles. So it was like scooping up damp sand and then letting it drip down. And so my gesture is drip, 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 drip. <laughs> Great. Yes. Round of applause. Yes. Okay. This is lovely. I would love one more just to play with. Anybody? Anybody care to share? Um, I'll, I'll, I'll share. Um, Great. I won't tell. Oh, round of applause. Ooh, would you mind sharing what what it was? I'm so I'm yes. I used to like trick my younger sibling. Not trick. I used to try to talk my younger sibling into playing um like more with my Barbie dolls with his GI Joe dolls, and I will always have to be like, I won't tell, but I I would, and that's horrible. But um, but the idea of knowing like you know it was a gender performance thing that he wasn't supposed to be doing. Um, yeah. <gasps> this is so exciting, everybody. Okay. Okay. Oh, oh, I love this so much, everybody. Ah, okay. So pulling from childhood memory, there's, there's something, um, and I know on our further reading slide, we'll, we'll talk about it, but, uh, Jack Halberstam's, uh, Queer Art of Failure, thinking about childhood, thinking about the, 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 the possibilities of bumbling, stumbling, failing, um, falling about, right? Um, the the generous space of of childhood um i i love locating that especially for queer artists um finding the joys of the past and pulling it forward the gestures the tones the lines and things that we can pull into characters in the present um so thinking about self similarities the next thing that would happen after doing a reflection a reflection on the past through self similarity and how it then, you know, either doesn't sit correctly in your body now or does feel good and joyful in your body now, we would probably walk around the space together, trying on this gesture, um, can't really do that in a Zoom space, but we would live like that for a bit, like, you know, a number of minutes um, and see what works, what feels right, what doesn't feel right for the character that we're creating or just in our bodies in that moment, depending on, again, what part of the prism you're working with that day in the rehearsal space. The next thing that we would work on is something called echo rhythm. Um, so an idea of movement as an echo, an idea that um, energy, again, is this echoic thing that can grow and shrink um, and build on itself and that energy can multiply, but within the self. So imagining the gestures and feelings in your body as something that um, is self-contained you yourself, based on that chaos calm that we did before, you have the energy within you to restage this moment. You also have the agency to alter the shape, the dynamic and the emotion on a certain spectrum. And we can build this energy vocabulary within an echo chamber. So how I imagine this in a space, because I'm on a Zoom box, it's kind of helpful. If I were to turn around and this was a solid wall and not a piece of fabric, um, I would turn around and echo rhythm as an exercise would be, and you can all do this in your own time. If you find like an alleyway or a wall or another room in your house somewhere, you can do this. Um, again, don't disturb your neighbors unless you feel like you need to. Um, and go, go somewhere with a solid wall. You can do this now. I think Tatiana, I think it'll be best if you demonstrate this especially with the trampoline um, because you've done a 
this before. Um, but what you would do is repeat one of the gestures over and over again, and the energy of that gesture. So um, one that would be fun to do uh, uh, would be my, my sister um, dropping a bowl of cake batter when I was young. Uh, this is enjoy, this is failure, but it's a, it's a good exercise. Um, and she said, oh no, the cake batter, very straightforward memory. Um, and she spilled the bowl of cake batter. And that gesture and that line, you send the energy of the gesture at the wall, it ricochets back at your body, and the energy of it, as if you're performing to yourself in a mirror, comes back into your body, and you re-perform that gesture again. Um, very much inspired by Brecht um, in a lot of the repeatable gestures, but freeing us from understanding ideas of like the silhouette of how bodies are supposed to be perceived in silhouette and in shadow, and instead thinking about how we can repeat things to get new information out of gesture. Um, so, oh no, the cake batter and dumping a bowl, right, um, could get louder, it could get more the bowl could get bigger, it could get uh, more and more energized, it could get smaller and quieter. There are so many possibilities um, for thinking about how the energy might change, but it should be a natural progression. It shouldn't be something like, oh, I know that whoever is instructing me today wants me to get louder and louder and louder. That's not what we're looking for. We're thinking about creating a spectrum of energy in the room that you feel comfortable working within so that vocabulary can come back later. And I can say, remember when you went up here, we should go back to that space, right? Or remember when you got quieter and let and the energy dropped when you got to the end of your echo chamber, that's where we wanna go today, right? So again, building this safety net, this echo chamber of your own limits and parameters as an actor, rather than being prescribed like a one to 10 scale, which is traditional in the classroom nowadays, because what is a 10, what is a one, um, and who is setting that scale, um, especially within ability and neurotypicism. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think, I think allowing this echo chamber to speak for you, right? And, and reflect your own safety and comfort. So Tatiana, can you demonstrate just quickly how you might imagine an echo chamber of this trampoline gesture? You don't have to, if, if you're like, I don't know today. <laughs> no, absolutely, I'm happy to. Right. Right. So I'll stick to my ending gesture off of the trampoline. My phrase is, I have no room to flip. I'm gonna aim at the wall that is past my screen. I'm looking at a bed post here, but here we are. I have no room to flip. 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 And let's hold there. Round of applause. Ooh, and way to flip the energy and uh, oh, that's so exciting. Um, so uh, another way that echo rhythm allows us to free ourselves again from binary conceptions of, of, of talking about gesture and talking about energy um, uh, is the idea that in a, a lot of spaces, I know for myself that I've had the note from directors time and time again, especially when playing men um, in uh, straight men in particular, it's like, make that more masculine, make that more powerful. And the, and the idea there is that power is rooted in this like cis men idea of masculinity, right? Like that is where power is, is rooted. Um, and freeing the notes from gendered ideas of energy and power, that is also something that we're, we're looking to do, that the, the vocabulary that we're building is that gesture did this as you built it in the echo chamber, grab one of those and pull it into the space, right? We don't have to start gendering <laughs> like, the the way that Tatiana went like this because this does or when Tatiana 
in our in-person workshop, brought in hula hooping and then let go of the hula hoop. Moving your hips is an inherently a gender thing, right? We don't necessarily have to think about it in a binary conception. Um, not that we have to throw gender away completely because we can always fill ourselves up with gender when we want to. But as a baseline, I think removing it is something that would help many, many people feel more comfortable in rehearsal um, and a classroom. Um, great. Character-wise, too, the possibilities of thinking about energy in an echo chamber, too. There are like nine different characters that came out of Tatiana's um, piece just there that I could, as a director, help push in different directions, or one character at different levels of, of comfort with the idea that was happening in that scene at any given moment. So again, playing with all of that within echo rhythm, everybody, wow. I feel like what a Friday activity that we're all embarking on right now. Um, but anyway, um, so that is that. Um, so we are at we're at six o'clock. I'm going to be cognizant of time. Um, and I just want to pop over uh, to our idea of modeling structures. Um, so modeling structures, everybody. Um, did everyone bring a poem today? Did you bring a poem? Oh my goodness, this is amazing. You all are the best. Um, so let's grab our short poem um, for today. Um, so I want you to think about the, sen now the light's coming in over here. All right. Um, I want you to think about the sensations held in the piece that you brought today. Um, imagine that this poem um, is a painting or a musical composition or a sculpture. And I want you to take this poem after you read it through um, on your own. And then I want you to set it in front of you as if you were looking at a piece, uh, an object that you were going to paint like a still life painting um, or an object that you were being inspired by to write about um, or you know, something along the lines of still life, right? Inspiration, a muse of some sort. What world in this poem can you perceive so recite the poem as you would existing within the world of that poem. Who is, who is reciting this poem? Imagine the contours and fragments of the poem, the way the aesthetics inform how your body moves as you read it and feels as you recite the poem. So you can turn off your camera, do this a number of times, but really think about what the aesthetic world of this poem is. And this is, again, uh, you can turn your, your cameras off. Um, for those of you at home, um, this is uh, an exercise that can be done with a poem. Um, the exercise, uh, as I have written it so far and experimented with it, um, also works really, really well um, with monologues. So in an acting classroom, <laughs> it would also work, um, but we don't have much time on the Zoom workshop to develop character through a monologue or you know, workshop monologues uh, in the way that I would like to. So we're focusing on poems today. Um, but if you're at home and you have a little poem um, that you would like to work with, um, follow along with us. That would be lovely. And I have a couple, just in case people forgot. Do do. Oh, we have a question, Tatiana. Yes, we do. It was in relation to the activity we just did. Would you like to save it for the energy? Yeah. Actually, let's let's do it right now. Great. V yeah. asked a why a wall and not a mirror for echo rhythm. So the reason why I I have decided on the wall um, is that I wanted to think about how sound hits like a solid wall, but I think that a mirror or a window, like something see through, could also you know work as well. Um, I also think um, that there are other activities um, and exercises that work on mirroring the self with a mirror. Um, and I wanted this one to be about energy as it is being sent against the, the physical wall and metaphorical wall ahead. So something very, very solid, but it could definitely be a mirror as long as you can imagine the weight of the object coming back and forth to you, the weight of the, um, Energy, the, the energy of that moment coming back and forth. Yeah. A mirror would be fun though. That would, we should, we should test that out at some point. Maybe I'll do that. Ooh. Yeah. 
Oh, I guess this this would be a good time to, uh, I'll, I'll repeat this again with the goodbyes, but for those of you watching at home, um, you can go to my website, www.jmreses.com um, backslash forward slash um, uh, <laughs> contact um, and, send, and send an inquiry um, about um, booking a non-binary acting methods workshop uh, for your theater company, school, um, wherever wherever you might want um, to have the style of workshop, um, I would be happy to come um, and 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 share materials um, with your students or actors. Um, yeah, that's great. All right, everybody else in the space, when you're feeling up to it, you can turn your cameras back on and arrive with me. Hello. All right. So would anyone like to share just a recitation of the poem as they would if they were living this poem within the world of this poem? And by that, I mean, if it's a poem that centers around the idea of a rainstorm, um, you know, it could be that you're amongst the rain, right? You're you're dodging the rain, right? It could be something as 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 straightforward as that. Um, but yeah, anyone anyone want to embody this poem and and perform it for us right now? I'd be more than happy to. Great, please. No. Uh, this is for context. This is a poem that I created six years ago, and I like found the other day, and I was like, why not? So <laughs> lately I have wondered, what is it about me that you see? How I glow against the canvas for all to know? I watch as you stare at the crown of hair that I wear, proudly and fluidly crafted with care. Thick forests of twists and turns reach up and touch the sky. They ascend towards the light and become one everlasting burst. My sparkling crown fit for a queen, perhaps the skin, that covers me, it's like silk, rich in glock and chalk full of melanin and creamy like chocolate milk, glistening in the sunshine of the day and everlasting in my own special way, everlasting sunshine and a world where Black people exist in the future and liberation. Thank you so much. Oh my goodness. Okay. Uh, I want I want to just start working on this poem and working into the modeling structure, but I want I want to hear one more poem and then we'll work both poems. Um, and this is this is the last activity we're doing today, just so everyone knows. Um, so if you want to share within the space, please do so because we're, we're we're focusing on um, objects and modeling um, now. Um, and I know I know we mentioned playing a tomato. Yes, yes. Tomato, yeah, that's kind of what we're doing right now. So if, if you wanna share, I, I would encourage anybody who wants to share their poem because we'll work it in just a second. Anybody? Ooh. I can go if no one else. But Connor, I feel I feel your energy, Connor. Come on. Oh, let's, no, let's no, give it to, no, no, let's no, give it to Connor. Just, no, 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 TJ. Uh, um, so uh, I'm only going to read the first paragraph of this because it's long. Uh, yeah. uh, but this is a supermarket in California by Allen Ginsberg. <sighs> what thoughts I have of you tonight, Walt Whitman, for I walked down the side streets under the trees with a headache, self-conscious looking at the full moon in my hungry fatigue and shopping for images, I went into the neon fruit supermarket dreaming of your enumerations. What peaches and what penumbras, whole families shopping at night, aisles full of husbands, wives in the avocados, babies in the tomatoes. And you, Garcia Gorka, what were you doing down by the watermelons?
Beautiful, beautiful. I would love one more too. I would love one more if someone wants to go, because then we'll have some examples of where these poems can go. Through okay, so this is actually which Connor, but I was going to say it, but then I saw Connor's face, so I'll, I'll say mine really quickly. Um, yeah, TJ, you won't you celebrate with me what I've shaped into a kind of life? I had no model, born in Babylon, both non-white and woman. What did I see to accept myself, to be accept myself? I made it up here on this bridge between starshine and clay, my one hand holding tight, my other hand. Come celebrate with me that every day something has tried to kill me and has failed. Uh, that was Lucille Clifton. Beautiful. Thank you, everybody, for just jumping in here and and ah. Uh, I just wish we could all be in a little a little studio together doing this. It would be so fun. Um, okay, so we have three we have three pieces now presented into the space. Um, Perform beautifully, all of them, all so so wonderful. The exercise now with within this idea of modeling structure um, is thinking about how we can model character. Um, a little bit different because these poems you all brought in yourselves, um, not necessarily uh, something that you don't want to be performing, right? Um, or a character's monologue that you might be wrestling with because you don't quite understand where this character is coming from. Modeling structures as an activity here within, within fractals is the idea to then start exploring the aesthetics built into the text free of the preconceived notions that you might have about the work. Um, not free socially, politically, or culturally um, in the way that you would want to connect to the piece, rather freeing yourself from the idea that you are bound to perform it in a certain way, that you have historically been told this is how you need to perform this text, right? You can perform this in a different way. Um, so the modeling structure would be perform this as an aesthetic gesture built within the text itself. How can I say that another way, Joe, in a way that actually makes sense to everyone out in the world? So imagine one object or note or color or flavor from the world within this poem. You are now that door, that flower, that elbow, that blade of grass, that trumpet call, that taste of salt water. Recite the poem as this entity. And I want this uh, to, to understand even more so this idea of trans possibility here of the queer possibility of playing the object of being an entity of being something outside of preconceived notion. How does this transform your body to play this idea, this concept, your voice, your emotional relationship with the piece itself? Is there more or less to the story here? So an example of this uh, happened in my introduction to acting class just a couple of weeks ago, where a student performed a monologue. Um, monologues are very rich in that sense because um, poems are already full of, of imagery that we can play and kind of incorporate into our body naturally. Monologues feel a little bit more, at times, I don't want to generalize, but at, at times a little bit more stuck, a little bit more rote um, in, in their performance. Um, and this student performed as a door which is why it's included in this list. And it was one of the most incredible things I have ever seen someone perform um, because the student actually moved as a door and vocalized as the door opened and closed throughout the monologue, just on a whim within like five seconds of me saying, you are the door now go. Um, the door moved back and forth and the character came to life as a door. And it was just so amazing. Um, but if anyone out of you three wants to try this in a new way, um, as an aesthetic <laughs> gesture within the poem. You can, you also don't have to, um, 
I know it's been, we've been, we've been at it for a while now, but if anyone wants to try it as a tomato, um, but I know not all of your poems had tomatoes, but one of yours did have a tomato. So I saw the seed planted early. The tomato seed was planted at the beginning. No, I, I know, I know, I know. Um, we also, we do, we definitely don't have to if we don't want to, but. I'm happy to do a second take. Oh yes, please do. <coughs> Once. Lately, I have wondered, what is it about me that you see? How I glow against the canvas for all to know. I watch as you stare as the crown of hair that I wear, proudly and fluidly crafted with care. Thick forests of twists and turns reach up and touch the sky. They ascend towards the light and become one everlasting burst, my sparkling crown fit for a queen. Perhaps it's the skin that covers me like silk, rich and chock full of melanin and creamy like chocolate milk glistening in the sunshine of the day and everlasting in my own special way. A world where Black people exist in the future. Liberation, everlasting sunshine. Thank you so much. Thank you. What were you working with here? What, what, what were you playing with? The crown. I knew it and I'm so happy about it. Oh my goodness. Oh, and what, what was informing your choices as the crown? What was bringing you to this? Because I feel like the, the white gaze and like people are like, oh, that hair, oh, that crown, can I touch it? I'm an experience that you can't touch. So no, you can't have it. And no, you can't touch my hair. <sighs> this, I, thank you, thank you. Ra another, another round of applause, another snap. I thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all for, for joining today. I, uh, I can't, I can't even express just how I, I'm just so grateful that everyone is here on the Zoom call and talking about this and, and thinking about these things because they're, they're things that we should be thinking about and you all are thinking about them in such glorious ways. And uh, I'm just so grateful. I'm so, I'm so grateful. I don't even know. I can't, I can't put into words anything else. Um, we only have about 15 minutes and I just wanna be quick about something, but also be very mindful of it um, very, very quickly as I pull this up. Um, oh, no, not that. Um, one last share of this graph um, for everybody watching. Um, gender rehearsitivity on the scale of thinking about gender, actor and character dynamics within the system of six gender performances within a prism. Um, again, returning agency to the actor's body um, and the characters that they create. This though is a starting point and I want us to understand that thinking about gender is just the way into these exercises that I feel have historically been not talked about in the way <clears throat> that my students um, and fellow actors and trans and non-binary folk um, within the theater community um, have had um, access to, right? Um, I think that this is one way in. That being said, this matrix of gender and this matrix of spectatorship and perception is a starting point for thinking about race, age, nation, ethnicity. This is the starting point um, that I have found um, in the exercises that I'm building, but this is definitely something on a scale that I think will be developed um, within classroom spaces where the exercises can be um, brought in um, and students can, can grow and learn, hopefully from, from these methods. Um, I would be remiss not to mention um, this slide in particular. I just want to mention my bibliography and the people and genealogies of people that I have been thinking with and developing this work. Um, really, really thinking closely with uh, Dr. Sherelle D. Luckett's Black Acting Methods, Critical Approaches, um, and her studio, and uh, Dr. Sweeney Madison's Performed Ethnography and Communication are deep, 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 deep inspirations to my work um, as I've been developing um, exercises. Um, so yeah, please screenshot this at home if you have it. Um, if you can, um, take a look at all of these uh, lovely pieces for further learning. Um, I, I stand by uh, all of these 
uh, lovely pieces and people and resources for trans actors as well. Um, continue to explore um, all of these as well um, for, for whatever you need. Um, and anybody out there watching as well, you can also contact me via my website for advice, further learning, um, especially because I know that booking a workshop is not within uh, everyone's financial means. So you can always contact me directly um, for more information or resources. And I'd be happy to share those with anyone and, and everyone who would care to do so. Um, stopping the share there. Great. Questions from the group before we head out? Comments, concerns, insults to me, recipes, fears, woes? Just thanks and gratitude. Thank you for your time. Thank you for everything that you are creating and building um, and letting us all join you today in this journey. Thank you. Thank you for coming today. It's it's been. I, I'm. I hope. I hope this is not the end of the conversation. And I'm going to send out. Oh, Tatiana has a playlist that we thought we were going to play at the beginning, but then we realized that if this is going to live on YouTube after in the world, that copyright was going to be a problem. So we're going to send that out to all of the participants today, so that we have something to remember this by, which is a playlist of songs that we can all um, jam to at some point. Um, any other questions, thoughts from the group? This is really invigorating. I like came from like hours and hours of like reading code and coding over it. So I'm just like, I just love the switch. And it was just such a delight to be able to hold space with you all. And thank you so much for bringing all the selves here in the Zoom. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Great. Great. Ooh, Spotify link. And we'll, I'll email it out to you after everything is set and done. All right, everybody. Well, then we will wrap it up. So thank you all, um, everybody at home for attending the first, um, hopefully maybe not the last, uh, digital uh, non-binary acting methods workshop here uh, via HowlRound. Again, um, I would like to thank um, my grant uh, sponsor, the Mayor's Office, the Boston Mayor's Office of Arts and Culture Opportunity Fund um, for helping make this happen. Um, and yeah, thank you all. Thank you all. We're done. Have a great Friday, wherever, whatever time zone you're in. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. Take care and be well.